Ladies and gentlemen, this is Steven Victor. He is the force behind Pop Smoke. You know, we're remembering Pop Smoke, this phenomenal project that's been put together, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. It's a bittersweet moment, you know, obviously bringing this album to fruition, Pop not being with us to uh, enjoy the moment. How much was already done? And how much did you have to go back and finish? So a, a lot of it was done because the idea, like it's, it's crazy because everything was coming together the way we spoke about it. The whole idea was we were going to put out, when I spoke to Papa, we were working on the first mixtape, we were going to put out a series of mixtapes, Meet the Woo 1, Meet the Woo 2, Meet the Woo 3, however long it took to make his name a staple, you know what I'm saying? And then from there we were going to the album. So after the second mixtape, it was like, you know what I'm saying? He was he he was he was he was making that a name. Dior for was ringing yeah, out here, rocking, son. You know what I'm saying? And, and when he did Dior, I that Christopher said, Walken, that Christopher yeah. Walken is moving out here. Nah, thank you, Good man. Lord. So, yeah. Um. So you know, we only did two. We, we did. You know what I'm saying? So it was like so. Me and Pop had spoke like this was like in January, because you know he was so he was so busy the end of the year, the end of 2019. I remember he would you know he would be in London on Monday and then. In New York on Wednesday and in LA on Thursday, and I just remember, like then this was every week. Yeah, every week is like it was just crazy, and he was going back and forth to court. So I just remember, like around no December, he had to go to London, and then I was like, "Yo, when you get back, like right after, right after the break, you know, what I'm saying you could take a vacation." Because he used to be like, "Yo, bro, I'm tired. I'm not used to this. this is this is crazy." You know what I'm saying? Like every day I'm on a plane. He's like, "This can't be good for for someone's body." You know what I'm saying? So I was <laughs> yeah. just like. I was like, yo, you know, you could, I was like, just take a vacation in December, you know what I'm saying? And then right after that, we could start working on the album, you know what I'm saying? Because I, because then we planned the tour for him to go. He was supposed to go to tour, on tour from March to like May. So the idea was we would drop Meet the Woo 2 in February. Originally January, we had to push it back, but we would drop Meet the Woo 2. He would finish his album and then go on tour and then we would put the album out in May. Because he was always like, yo, the summertime, is, that's my time, you know what I'm saying? Like. Right. Summertime is my time, so how do we own that? So I was like, all right, well, you got to finish your album before you go on tour because, you know what I'm saying, I know, you know, tour life is, is a whole different thing. You're not going to be able to, to to focus. You're going to be tired, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to be able to do your best work, so let's just knock it out. So we ended up going to, to the Bahamas to work on the album, you know what I'm saying? And then we came back, to, we released the mixtape, and then we, was, was, we, were, we went back to L.A. at the end of February to finish the album. So the album was like... It was, I would say it was probably like 70 to 80% done. And then obviously, you know, unfortunately he was murdered. And then what happened was when I got back to New York, um, you know Renee, right? Yeah. You know, Renee kept on hitting me and was like, yo, 50 want to talk to you, 50 want to talk to you. So I finally got myself together like a week later and I went to go see him and we were just talking. And then... The conversation came up because because Pop had when we when me and Pop went to go see Fifty originally, he had told Fifty like yo I'm working on this album, and he was sending Fifty songs like yo I want yo get Chris Brown on this song for me, yo I'm I'm thinking about putting this song on my album. What do you think about it? So they were already in conversation about his album. So then Fifty was like, what are you doing with the album? And I was just like, nothing. I was like, I'm not gonna put an album out. Like I was just like not in the right frame of mind emotionally. I was like, yo Fifth, I can't even listen to his music, let alone think about put together the album, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is... Mm. And he was like, he was like, yo, I, I get how you're feeling, but you can't be... He was like, you can't be selfish. And I was like, be selfish? I was like, what do you mean be selfish? He was like, yo, you gotta, you gotta get out of this feeling that you're, that, that you're in, you know what I'm saying? You can't be like, depressed and, um, stop the legacy that he was building, number one. I was like, you, he was like, he was like, you have to do the opposite. You gotta go towards it, you know what I'm saying? You gotta finish the album. And then on top of that, he was like, how do you expect like everyone around him in terms of his family to benefit off of all the work that he put in? It's like he, it's almost, it'll almost be like everything happened in vain if you don't put the album out. He was like, I'll help you. He was like, I know you're not in the place emotionally to, to get yeah. to it like that. He was like, I'll, I'll help you. You know what I'm saying? He was like, send me all the songs he was working on and I'll, I'll executive produce it for you if you want. And I'll, I'll be the mouthpiece and I'll, and I, you know, he's like, I won't charge. I won't charge anyone. I won't charge the family. I won't charge the label. He said, I'll do this. Just because of the love I have for him. What's up? What's up? What's up, Phil? Of everything that you heard on here, do you have any favorites that stand out in your mind off top? Did you did you play them the uh, the Tokyo thing? Yeah, that, the bad from Tokyo. That's crazy. Yeah, that was because what he said. 
on on the record, it was like, man, it was. It, look, I, I told him Stephen, you was in the meeting. The first one I'm talking to him, right? Yeah. What I told him, he was, I said, deaf is of the tongue, right? Mm-hmm. I remember that. So I said, because the things we put on these records, we have to repeat them over and over. And you won't realize it, but you'll be saying it for 20 years. If, this, if the project is successful like that, you'll be, look, I'm still going to get rich die crime. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying to him is, I said, when you write deaf, write it away from you. You sat right mm -hmm. across from me when I said that to him at the table, Stephen. You know what I'm yep. saying? Because I said, write it, write it. It's going to happen. We know the lifestyle is there. That's, that's what I happen to. But write it happening to someone else. Write it happening to... You see what I'm saying? Like, And, and I was saying this without even hearing his records. Right? Like, you know, the I, I feel like the, the gamble or the game in London is so full of heartbreaks that whoever hurts the worst to crap out will crap out. Right, so if you're gambling with the light bill money, it will be dark. Right? Wow. Mm -hmm. So when when you say when people use titles for records like uh all or nothing, I said you get nothing. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I looked at it like, yo, it's it's a uh I'm not I wouldn't use that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I look, It's one of those self-fulfilling prophecies. You put that energy out there. Right. You know. And it comes back. It's That's like right. ready to die. Yep. You see what I'm saying? It's like Machiavelli, the Tupac records. All of these shit. Mm -hmm. When the guy wrote, wrote those things, I seen it happen right in front of me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then the the Tokyo record, the songs he got, that he wrote that that he uh back from Tokyo. Tokyo Tokyo. He said, um, look my killer in his eyes. You see what I'm saying? Like and, he, and then he said, My Matt Killer be the case. Beat the case came out and, and got in the wraith. You know what I'm saying? And then I brought the, the that part, look by killing his eyes twice behind it and slowed it down as he did it. Because this is what I, I said to him not to do before. I, I don't know, he probably recorded that before I said it, right? But Yeah, that song was older, yeah. I would just, I just, this is what I, what I wanted. I, it was almost, when I played it for Steven, he was like, yo, that's. Polarized that you did it like that. We glad to have you back leaning in on this pop smoke. I think this is a moment in hip hop history that people should really stop and cherish to even be able to have an individual like yourself. And I told Stephen Victor earlier it's a bittersweet moment because we are getting this pop smoke music. Um, and you're like, you're hearing this young artist from New York who is making phenomenal music, right? And then we also were able to get the compliment of you leaning in and saying, I'm going to make sure that this gets done. And then motivating Steven Victor and just really sealing this moment up to, to be as meaningful as it can for a young artist. I think it's a pivotal moment in hip hop and it's a pivotal moment in New York hip hop specifically. You know what I mean? To, for us all to come together as a town and rally around this. And be able to do it. Like, look, even yesterday, I, I saw a uh, comment. I put uh, something up with the, the young boy Fabio, right? Mm -hmm. He going. Mm -hmm. He got a box. They sent them the, the quarantine kit, right? A bunch of stuff that they put in there for me and shit. So yeah. he got it, and I'm like, yo, I'm doing my own freshman class for New York City, right? There, and I'm picking. I love that. And I said, they'll know when they get the box that you've been picked as a, as a freshman. Yeah. And it's a lot of a lot of artists out there that's trying, but some of them build more consistency than others. The thing that's really interesting about Brooklyn is they're they're actually marketing each other. Yep. If they can figure out how to not kill each other in the process, man. You see what I'm saying? Like, cause cause the is mm -hmm. you need they need. I know that they they genuinely start feeling like what you saying that I, I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And they actually start to, you know what I'm saying? Because they're in the element, you know? So what I'm saying to you is, is when, if they can figure out how to not move on them, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's stay focused on what they actually want to do. Because it's not necessarily the artist is to support cast, and they have to influence those guys. That right. it's not an issue for you to do that. This is our music. 